Hello, in this video I'm going to be restoring this Nintendo Famicom system. As you can see here, it's very dirty, very yellow, and it also came to me untested. So before I do any cleaning or de-yellowing, I'm going to test the system and make sure it actually works. So as you can see here, the Famicom is now set up and ready to go. I did spray a little contact cleaner into the connector just to help with reading the game. But the good news is, the system powers up fine and it seems to read the game just perfect. The only problem I found was the main controller had a very loose action button, so when you're actually jumping it, you needed to push down quite hard, which took a little getting used to, and I know that's not how they normally are with these controllers, but otherwise I just tested the system for a few minutes to make sure it would play the game, and yep, it was perfectly fine, so I'll leave a little bit of footage of the system actually working, and then we'll cut to taking it apart and getting it ready for de-yellowing and cleaning. I've sped up the footage of me taking the Famicom apart. It's a very simple unit to take apart and it only uses Philips head screws, so no particular tools are required. I know some Nintendo products use their own type of screw head, so once the unit is apart I'll take the shell and give it a wash and we'll also have a look over the motherboard just to see if there's anything of interest really. Here is the motherboard for the Famicom system, and there was a fair amount of dust and a lot of fluff inside here, but nothing really suggests to me that the motherboard is in any trouble. As we saw earlier, it was playing games and reading cartridges just fine, so very happy with that. One thing to note is this is a 1984 motherboard. Now the Famicom itself launched in 1983, so this revision would have been made maybe a few months or perhaps a whole year after the system did debut. So I'll give the motherboard a clean, and attempt to tidy it up a little bit. Now that the console has been cleaned, I want to focus on how yellow it is. And if we move the ejection mechanism back a little bit, you'll actually see a nice contrast. And that's because the ejection switch has sat at the front of the console and sort of protected that part of the case. Now if we turn to the back, there's actually quite a, a big contrast here. These small white circles are where the controller ports are, and that's where there's a little controller clip that sits around that part to make it look nice and flush. And yeah, those parts are nearly pure white, so the goal will be to get the whole shell looking just as white as that part there. Okay, so the Famicom is now submerged in a retro-bright solution, and I'm going to leave it outside so it has exposure to UV. I'll leave it out for maybe four to five hours, and then we'll come back and we'll check on the progress. So it's been about four to five hours, and this is how the Famicom now looks. Now, it's not finished, but it is looking so much better. It's got a, a sort of creamy look to it. It's not white yet, but the difference is so much better than it was before. And if we look around the back, you'll notice that the controller ports, the contrast between the pure white that's left there and how it is now, it's not perfect, but it's getting very close. So definitely a lot better. I'm very happy with how this is going. And I reckon another session tomorrow should have this done, if not perfect. Now whilst the case is away being restored, I decided I'd give the Famicom a composite mod. And I don't do anything too complicated, I basically do a standard AV mod to the system and wire it, hardwire a composite cable in. So yeah, that's basically how that's done, and I'm just testing it here. Unfortunately my CRT TV doesn't want to sync up to the camera, so it is flashing and going a bit dark, but I do have an LCD backup TV wired into the CRT just so I can make sure it works, and as expected it works fine. Unfortunately you can't really capture the quality on the camera I'm using, so this is just to demonstrate that the audio and the picture are working fine, and it is. The way I do the mod is, as I said, I've got a cable hardwired into the system, and the reason I do that is so I don't need to do any modifications to the case. I'm really not a fan of butchering up the system's case or adding unnecessary holes, so if you do want to extend the reach of the, the AV leads, you can simply add a female RCA extender and it will work fine. So I thought I'd touch up on a small detail on this system. Now, if you recall, I'll put a picture up. The front strip has a sort of 
a clear tape that goes over it and originally it had faded and wrinkled and gone quite bad. Now I removed it and unfortunately even the panel behind it had a few marks and blotches I couldn't get off but I thought seeing as I had it off I might as well put something else over it so I got some clear tape and masked it on very carefully and cut around it just to give it that small shine on the front strip which it was now lacking because I had to take the old one off and whilst it will never look perfect I can't get it to match 100% I think it looks a lot better than having nothing there or leaving the sort of wrinkled original strip on it that had gone a bit cloudy so I've just got some sped up footage here of me applying the new tape and just quickly sort of scalpeling around it um, to give it a new sort of a nice strip on the front. Well, we're at the end of this Famicom restoration, and this is the final result. I'm very happy with how it is, and let's have a look at how it used to be. So I hope that shows us quite a big contrast. Very yellow, very tired looking. The strip on the front didn't look too good, so I'm very pleased with how it's now come out, and we'll have a look in some more detail. Now one thing I did note at the start of the video was the ejection mechanism. The red part just there actually concealed a bit of the plastic and it had protected it so it was blindingly white compared to the rest of the unit. And if we turn it back, it matches the rest of the system as close as I can get it. So I'm very pleased with how it's come out. The system's now clean, it's white, it's had a bit of a boost with an AV upgrade so you can plug it direct into composite with mono to stereo sound. And yeah, very pleased. Like I've said before, I can't get it 100%, but I think where it is now is so much better than where it used to be. So I hope it's been a good video. Thank you very much for watching. I really enjoy taking these systems, which have been a bit neglected or forgotten about, and trying to give them a new lease of life, sort of get them back out there and ready to play. So I'll just finish up with me actually playing the system and enjoying it. And thank you very much for watching.